having finally gotten through all of this power supply testing, AC and DC and rectifier, I feel as though I'm in a good place uh, to finally be able to clean all of this up. There we go, I've completed the uh, final rewiring here. Made everything nice and clean, cut everything to size. Everything looks good. There's no uh, abundant service loop anymore. So this is, this is all done. I'm just gonna go through and inspect the rest of the wiring on the power supply side, the stuff that I didn't have to work on. Make sure everything's good, maybe reflow some stuff, pull some stuff up just to give it adequate separation. I'm gonna be addressing this a little bit later and I'm gonna find a, a, a final way of hooking in this capacitor. I have run a ground across here in support of this 20 microfarad capacitor, and I will now bring the capacitor over and swing that down to the ground. So now I have the capacitor mounted properly. We can see ground over here. We can see the tie off going to the uh, tubes up top over there. Onto this fuse here, Th this is not in the schematic. It doesn't belong, and I I've left it here for now. Uh, at best, a clutch. I, I really, you know, I'm thinking to myself, this should go because this is, this is just a wire soldered onto a fuse. I really don't know how I feel about this, just hanging in here like this. So I'm going to take this out and solder the wire back to the board. So here it is, everything complete, everything cleaned up. I've gone through the other wires as well. All the components are laid out. Very nice. Going to fire up and test everything again since obviously I've touched all sorts of connections. But yeah, I think I think the power supply section came out pretty good. I further complemented this with the replacement of both bulbs, which were both burned out with uh, brand new bulbs. Having already dealt with the problems from this standby switch and the wiring earlier, there's something about this cable that says, don't trust me, and I'm listening. So I'm going to open this up and I'm gonna go through and verify the wiring in this and see what's going where and the very first thing I want to look at is that connection that runs from the standby up through this cable allowing for the completion of that circuit I have a very good feeling it's not supposed to be where it says it's supposed to be first of all this was not fun to remove uh, this is definitely not uh, an easy connector to work with I managed to remove it without damaging it. it's like Bakelite in metal spring Wow. Uh, number two, Jesus Christ. Look at this soldering. My God. I mean, it's enough to work with, but... I mean, man, oh man. Look look at that. Was it supposed to? Was it not supposed to? I don't know. I'm going to have to look at the di... That, what is that? Let's start with the basics. Diagram says 1, 5, 7, and 3, right? With a short to 7 and 3. Let's Let's try this now. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I got one, five, six, and seven. That that doesn't sound right. There should be nothing on six. What is this? So so this is wrong. According to the multimeter, and uh, just by looking at it visually, this black wire is the wire coming off the standby switch is going to the red wire and sure enough that red wire is pinning out here right directly to pin seven but it should be going to pin five and not pin seven the reason is is that it should be uh cross connected and that circuit should be provided by plugging in the speaker and what happens is when the speaker gets plugged in the speaker has a short in its connector that plugs pin seven to pin five and provides that ground. So if you have the standby switch out of standby, right, and you have uh, this thing disconnected from the speaker, this should put it uh, out of standby as well, right, by disconnecting the path. And this is in the wrong position. This needs to be rewired. These weren't even put through the holes. They were just sort of leaned on them and, and had solder applied. I've reconnected the terminations correctly in accordance with the schematic diagram. Uh, there is an extra cable that was on here that doesn't belong. I haven't snipped it yet. I just want to make sure 
that there is no value in that cable before I cut it short. Uh, also, I have uh, connected a temporary jump across to uh, ensure that the uh, amplifier is not forced in a standby when I take the standby switch out of standby. And then finally, I'll be hooking my 8-ohm speaker uh, to whatever the uh, correct terminals are right here to resume testing. So I have my wiring up top connected to the 8-ohm speaker, but uh, my short to allow it to come out of standby is not working. And I have added this, this red cable, as we see here. I've, I've connected standby directly to ground to facilitate it, and you could hear that it works. I'll, I'll touch the input jack. Right? So, so things are working uh, through the speaker connection. I'm going to have to shut down the amp, though, and find out uh, where this connection to ground is being lost, because that jump uh, should allow that connection to run straight through all the way back full circuit, and it's not. And granted, it's ad hoc what I did, you know, but, but I, I still feel as though it should work. Turns out that the only problem I had was uh, I had the uh, cross-connect in one of the wrong holes on that connector on the end of this cable here. And I simply moved it, and now everything is working fine. As you can see, the jumper is removed. And everything is working just fine now. I'm going to admit that initially I was a bit surprised here uh, firing this up and checking the uh, idle current going through these 6L6s. And... What I have here is the tube on the right. They're, they're about the same. They're, they're not far off if by only a milliamp, right? It's pretty good. Uh, but 52 milliamps, thought that was somewhat excessive. And I did confer with uh, some of the Ampeg folks uh, looking at the fact, first of all, this is cathode biased. I couldn't expect the values that I would see if it was a uh, fixed bias that you would find on like a, a fender, right? So in looking at this and doing the calculations against the uh, plate voltage and the cathode voltage came up with about uh, 20 watts and this is within the tolerance of this a little on the high side but uh, agreeable right so uh, again both tubes are, are sitting about here and one of the things I look for obviously is how's the resistor and the capacitor doing uh, for the circuits very important we got the resistors right here, a capacitor is right here, and I'll tell you that the resistor and the capacitor are, are dead on. The resistor is about uh, 4 ohms higher than it's rated for, so so that's that's pretty good. And and the capacitor is, is pretty much dead on, only off by uh, 1 or 2 microfarads. So, so there's nothing wrong here. This is what it is. This is how it's set up. Uh, given the, uh, the plate voltage is a little lower than what I would expect it to be uh, based on, on what I've read. Some people have a higher plate voltage. I don't see this as a problem. So I happen to notice that the primary input for channel one does not short to ground when there's no plug in it. It just floats, right? So now, you know, I could touch it and, and there's nothing but disconnect it and, and there's noise. I, I don't know why they designed it like that. But for, for testing purposes, I'm definitely going to have to have that shorted to ground if I don't want to introduce any noise into the circuit. Did some uh, tests through the amp. I heard some, some thunder coming out of it. Uh, it turned out to be a pot. You could hear the 200 hertz uh, signal being injected into the front end here. While I got this set up, I'm just going to run it through uh, both channels and the external amp input and make sure that everything's working fine, including all those uh, knobs and connectors before I move to uh, hooking the guitar into it. This connector gets shorted to ground, so I actually have to push it out of the way to test it. We can see that input is working too. I'll go everything more comprehensively when I can get the amp turned over safely. Now to drop my signal about down to nothing to uh, test the external amp jack, as you can see here, and uh, it works. My, my cable isn't shielded, so this picks up a little bit of noise here like an antenna, but we could hear it. It's time for a run of this amplifier. The fact that it's a bass amp has not escaped me. I don't have a bass guitar laying around. What I've done is I put the, um, the current meter back in line on one of the finals tubes. And what I want to do is just take this opportunity to test uh, 
how days uh, consistent with the uh, cathode bias circuit, we can see that it's uh, 51 milliamps. Again, reiterating that if this were fixed bias, you know, this would be way too high. And yet what I'm going to do is crank up the volume a bit and, and strum the guitar and we're going to watch the current uh, as, you know, as I play. So let's do that now. And, and this is just like a, like a crappy little test speaker. So don't, this is just me strumming here. So I'm going to turn up the volume. Right now it's all off, right? And I got everything pointed here now at, um, at nine o'clock. Turn the volume up to noon, 12. I'm going to drop the bass just so I don't mess up the speaker, though. And kick this up a little bit more. I actually see it dialed back a bit, I believe. It's sad. I, I can't tell in the circuit that, you know, where it dropped, but all I could see is what, what the current is on the output. So yeah, the um, the current is stable uh, through the uh, use of the amplifier, and this is cranked up, so. Yeah, there was some sag right there. Okay, cool, I just wanted to test that. I admit this is a little ad hoc, but uh, this speaker is uh, much better than that little tiny 8 ohm speaker that I use for testing and the camera is directly in front of the speaker, right? There's there's nothing There's no noise at all. Let's start. We'll just, we'll just uh, pluck the strings Of a, a, a vibrato to it, there, there's something in there. I think it sounds good. I've got it at 12 o'clock. Yeah, this amp, this amp's solid. This amp's solid. I like it. Very good. What do you think about this amp? Sounds nice. Sounds like it doesn't have all the features of the other one. It's clean though. You got a guitar turned all the way up? A little more. Go ahead. Sounds nice. Do you approve? I still do. Okay. We try the other jacks. No, no distortion, no nothing on the sand. This is like vanilla, the bass sand. I've now staged the uh, bottom of the unit, the wooden part that has the original diagram back in place. We're going to be sitting the amp back down on that unit now. Reinsert the two large flathead screws. So we have one last adjustment on this amp. I have uh, cranked up the volume. There's nothing connected to it. And that's uh, so I could do the hum control. I will turn it all the way to one side so we could hear it. 
right? Nerve the hum. As I turn it towards the middle, totally gone. If I keep going, you can hear it again. So now I'm just gonna, with two hands, get it right back to perfect. There it is, there's the microphone right up against the speaker with the uh, volume almost at full tilt. Now we'll get the cover back on. So this is it. This concludes the repair and restoration of the Ampeg B15N. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.